Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Nato, Application Engineer here for Saratech. Today I'm going to be talking about post-processing composites inside of FEMAP. So since Internastrian generates results on a ply-by-ply -ply basis, you're going to get output vectors that are equivalent to plate elements, such as major and minor principal stresses, shear stresses, VAMI stress, etc. There are a few bulk data options that you might want to specify for these type of analysis. The first one is SR comps. When this is toggled on, ply strength ratios are output for composite elements that have failure indices requested. The next one is no FISR. When this is toggled on, the failure indices and strength ratios will not be printed. The last one is setting no comps equal to zero. What this will do will output homogeneous values for your composite. There is no toggle inside of FEMAP to uh, specify this parameter, so you're going to have to enter it manually. You can enter that manually inside of FEMAP by going to your Nastra and Bulk Data Options, going to Manual Control, hitting Start Text Off, and go ahead and enter in uh, that parameter. You can also edit the input deck. When you specify failure theory and you specify bond shear allowable, and you can specify that on the property or the layout for failure theory, you're going to get additional output vectors that you can post process. And we're going to go ahead and discuss uh, in detail these uh, post processing uh, vectors. So these are the vectors that come directly in from Simpson and Astran. The first one is 6060. This is laminate max failure indices. So any value that is greater than 1 is indicating of a failure. This is based on the failure theory that you specify on the property card, and it's based on limit stress slash strain on the material card. The next one is laminate minimum strength ratio, and a strength ratio is 1 over the failure index. So anything for a strength ratio that has a value less than 1 is indicating a failure. Now at the ply base level, so you see I have ply 1 fiber failure index and I have bond 1 2 failure index. So each layer of your composite, so in this case ply 1, has a failure index and it also has a strength ratio. Now the bond between ply 1 and ply 2 has a failure index, index and a strength ratio. Now calculating margins for composites. So strength ratio, like we mentioned, is 1 over the failure index. So therefore, the margin of safety is your strength ratio minus 1. To include a safety factor in the formula, it's just strength ratio times 1 over the safety factor minus 1. Workflow for creating margin of safety fringe plots, and we're going to go ahead and show an example in a second. So the first one is you create a new output vector. You give it a title. In this case, I call it Siwu margin, margin of safety with a safety factor 1.5. And then you're going to say model output fill and you're going to fill that output vector. So here is my uh, simple model and we can quickly look at our material and you'll notice here in my limit stress and strain I have values for tension, compression, and shear and since I am using SIWU I have a SIWU interaction number here. Onto the property at the property level, I have a bond shear allowable entered and my failure theory specified. So this model, I have three load cases. Uh, before I begin, let's go ahead and quickly envelope um, maximum and minimums. So I'm going to say model output process envelope, and this time I'm going to do maximum, and I'm going to do all output sets. Um, in this case, since I only have three cases, but sometimes you might want to select certain output vectors that you're interested in. But for my case, um, it's it's very fast, small model. So model output process, envelope, minimum. And I'll explain why I'm doing uh, minimum and maximum here in a second. All right, excellent. So now we can go ahead and post-process our results. So for our first one, Let's go ahead and start with the first output vector that I talked about is 6060, the max failure index. As I mentioned before, any value that is greater than 1 indicates a failure. It might be difficult to see. So custom tools, views, switch back from printing. This makes it nice if you do have to you know, take screenshots, share some of this, or do post-processing information. So I can go ahead and step through each one of my cases and, and see that my value is less than 1 and then I can know if I'm uh, not failing. And This is why a envelope might be 
uh, pretty powerful. In this case, I want to go ahead and grab um, my maximum envelope. As I can, you know, see at the maximum of every load case, am I okay? Uh, and it looks like I am. Now, when I did enveloping, it also output the set. So I can tell which set has the highest maximum failure index. So in this area of my model, if I'm concerned, it's coming from my load set number three. And likewise in the other areas. The next output that we're going to look at is 60-66. And you see this one is a minimum strength ratio. So now any value that is less than one is being considered a failure. So I can look at three of my cases, but this is where it's powerful that I went ahead and enveloped the minimum. And now I can look at the minimum strength ratio of my model. And it looks like it passes uh, the criteria that I specified. The next output that I want to show is at a ply level. So you'll see at ply one, we have our you know, normal stresses, major, minor, principal stresses, max shear stress, VAMI stress that you can post-process. But what I want to show is you have a fiber failure index. So you can look at uh, ply one and see your value. And you also have the ability to look at the bond. So you can look at your interlaminar shear between ply one and two. Now it is a bit difficult to hit the, this uh, output vector and find it. It might make sense to create a filter, so a filter will help. But there is this cool custom tool, custom tools, post-processing, next ply. So we'll go from 1, 2 to 2, 3, and I can go and move it to the next ply pretty easily. So that's a, a convenient way to go ahead and uh, step to the next ply, or using your filtering will help as well. So the next thing that I want to show is let's go ahead and create um, that margin of safety calculation. So let's make our minimum in this case because I want to look at um, my margin. So we're going to say model, output, process. Uh, we already enveloped it. I'm sorry. So we have the minimum value. So I'll say model, output, vector. We're going to create a new output vector, and we're going to define it on elements. We're going to call it psi, woo, and we're going to put a safety factor of 1.5 on it. Okay, so we're taking this plot 6066, and we're going to go ahead and apply a safety factor. You can see we're at 1.2. Any number less than one, like we said, is going to be a failure. So we created our new output vector that we can post-process, and now we have to fill it. So we can say model, output, fill. Select the elements that I want. I have some non-composites, so I could just say method, type, and let's go ahead and grab everything that says it's a laminate. I think that's off the screen, so let me slide this up. So laminate, hit more, add it to the list, hit my highlighter, double check, and now I'm going to enter in this equation. So now I'm grabbing output vector here, I'm grabbing set 7, and I'm grabbing output vector 66, 60, 66, and I'm multiplying it by 1 over 1 1.5 and minusing 1 from there. And now I have a new output that I can go ahead and post-process. And now I can see, oh, I do have in my model, my lowest margin is um, you know, negative. So this is something that I might need to further investigate. Now, if I wanted to, um, you know, look at certain groups, I can see if, you know, any sort of the, the layers that have any uh, positive margins. In this case, it looks like uh, some are very close, um, but they do have a negative margin um, in my case. Let's go ahead and back to show full model. So in my case, I might need to go ahead and investigate a little bit, a little bit more. Now I can do the same thing for the bond shear level. So we still want to look at our envelope. 
or minimums. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab um, a, a bond. Uh, I'll grab 2, 3 in this case, uh, strength ratio. And if we want to take uh, this value, and we could create the same output vector like we did before, you would say model output vector. You would create your output vector. And you say model output fill, except this time your equation would be your output set would be 7, and your output vector would be this, uh, I think it's 1,691,000. And that's how you would go ahead and grab that. Now, if you wanted to envelope um, the bond, it, maybe you don't know which one is worse without having to go through each bond, you could go ahead and envelope those as well. So let's quickly do that. So you say model output process. We'll say envelope. And I'll say one or more selective vectors. I don't need uh, the sets for this one. Let's do minimum value. In this case, let's go for our three cases. And let's grab our in between our one two strength ratio. Now it might be pain to go ahead and click all these, but there's a nice button right here. Add similar layer applies. And it grabs all those as well. So now I have a new output, each vector and I can easily step through each one of these and look at whichever one is worse and create my margin plot. You'll notice at some point these elements become uh, white in this case. It's their element colors uh, because this uh, composite has uh, bond 1314 where the one in the middle does not have that many plies. So it's just one thing to, to look after as you are, are doing these type of composite uh, models. So just a quick recap of what I showed. So the first output vector is 6060, which is the maximum failure index, which is indicating any value greater than 1 is a failure. 6066 is the minimum strength ratio, which any value less than 1 is a failure. And then at the ply level, you have your failure index and your strength ratio for the composite ply and the bond. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com slash events.